Hello everyone out there, excited, big news today, the release of Save the Day, finally. I've worked on this one for two years, two years I've worked on, on this song, not of course 24-7, like always here a bit, there a bit, didn't know which direction to take it, mostly I was like putting pressure on myself because I was like, I love the vocal, I love the vibe of it, I want to make an instrumental build around the vocal, that fits, supports it, and maybe even lifts it up a little higher. And I hope you had a chance to listen to the song already. It's linked down below in the description if you want to check out the full song. Today's video is 100% about how the song was made. Every single little bit, I'll show you right here in the studio how it was done. First up, of course, huge thanks to everyone involved in making this song happen. Music is a collaborative effort. Robin Vane did the, the singing, songwriting, then we have the, the, the people behind Lost Frequencies, the label Found Frequencies, Audrey, Charles, and, and a bunch more taking care of like the promotion, helping me, assisting me, giving me tips, feedback, and of course Lost Frequencies himself. He was also like like part of like um, switching the vocal a little last minute but we switched it and we all like it a lot better so that was definitely worth it let's let's open up logic and and just go through the tracks and show you maybe here and there some bits that are interesting just me looking at the entire project i can already see like the struggle sometimes songs go fast sometimes not this one right here 78 tracks there's a bunch of audio in there, which usually means I, I made something in a project, bounce it out, put it in there, back and forth, like saving stuff, not saving stuff. But yeah, at the end, it's a quite simple song, actually. Took quite a detour to get there. Um, we got here the main drop of the song, the kick. On its own, not the coolest kick, but it really works with the sub bass. It's a sample out of a very old sample pack. Just cut away the low end, a little bit taking away a frequency that was bothering me. Then the sub bass, diva, standard kind of setting, cut off quite close to make it more subby. And on top, even removing the top frequencies to just really have that low end, below 43 hertz, just cutting away the mud to not interfere with the kick. And then we got some LFO for the side chaining, decapitator for the crutch. Just a hint. And then let's zoom in a little. Let's see where I got it. This one right here. That's the main lead synthesizer sound that carries the entire track. It was made with the OB6 synthesizer. It's usually right here, but I'm using it downstairs for, for live setup. I love that synth. I think it's like one of the standard sounds, I think sound number four that comes with the machine, but I tweaked it quite a bit to just get this clean kind of pluck sound. I really love that. Um, let me play it to you without any of the effects. There's a lot of automation. I mean, not here in Logic, if I press A, there is no automation. I did it with the synthesizer while recording it. And that's how you get like, that's how it gets more interesting over time, especially towards the end. That's like the modulation wheel up and cut off. And then slowly adding stuff like the bass sound is good but it sounds very dry so a low cut to get rid of the low frequencies decapitator for the crunch quite a lot of ott and ott it just makes it louder of course then you bring it down again but it brightens everything up pushes it makes it sound very modern 
I, I actually like using it, like on certain sounds it's very useful, not on everything and not exaggerated. This one right here is quite extreme. It even brings the noise floor up by a lot. And at first, like, I, I was thinking about removing it and getting rid of it, but I, I thought like that dirt of the noise in context within the song works. Probably now that I've told you about it, you'll hear it. But it's even in a certain section in the song, it's like, it's in there on purpose. I even faded it in and out. Let me see where it is. Yeah, right here. I copied one down um, just to edit it a little differently. Like that little part of silence isn't silent because there is the noise of the synth. And I like that effect. I faded it in a little to make it like smoother, not hit that hard and more purposeful. But sometimes there are mistakes or things that shouldn't be there or aren't clean that you then eventually think about just leaving in there. But yeah, back to the main synth sound and, and the effect. And we got the LFO tool for side chaining, but just like a little. And then the transient designer. I think just, no, it's actually not. I, I tried it out. I wanted to see if adding more attack or sustain might change the sound in a way. Since it was recorded from a synthesizer, I couldn't go back to the synthesizer, but eventually I just like didn't use it. So yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. And that's honestly already it for the drop. Like the drop is just kick bass main synth and then some, some drums of course. Quite reverby again since we don't have that many elements it needs all to fill out the space entirely in there is a real recorded hi-hat with like the Ludwig drum set in, in the um, live room just gives it a little more feel like every hit isn't exactly the same creates like a little groove, like I, I really like that. Also the crash is a real one. I layered it with like a sampled one. Let's check if there is anything else. Um, where's this one sound? Yeah, those are just like the vocal bits that I kind of created out of the original vocal, just like some... No, I think like the sustained stuff he actually sang. I asked him to do it, so to have it in there as a pad. And then the chopped up stuff um, was what I kind of added to it. And then just tension, 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 and release. And then that one wacky sound. The sound is just like a noise and, and I automated it weirdly in, in D.Va. Sometimes when you um, like turn one of these virtual knobs really quick, it, it makes something that just doesn't sound right. For example, if you turn up like the reverb spacing, reverb time, and I just did that and it kind of sounded cool. So I just um, recorded it and have it right here, just only in audio, but it's just like this, this noise row kind of thing. And uh, second drop, same thing again, main synthesizer sound. Um, there is like a, a percussive bit added to give it some flavor. And just that synth in between, just to have something else in there that creates a little bit of like suspense, tension, filling out the frequencies to make clear it's the second drop and it kind of is like the main kind of part of the song. So to really make it dense and, and kind of hectic in a way. Same goes for, for the, the kind of percussive stuff. It's very, very fast paced.
everything really on maximum. And you can hear if you like remove the main synth, the kick and the bass, it's very mid and top kind of heavy. Like you remove everything in the bottom end to have like room for these kind of elements. Let's listen to the same section again with everything on. This one right here is actually the club version, so there is like a, a more longer instrumental intro, outro part, the song's building up and, and fading away in, in a bigger, more epic kind of way. Let's maybe go to the vocal editing really quick, but there wasn't much I had to do because the vocals were just excellent. So would you follow me, follow me, to go and fight the world, don't you see? Three layers, that's it, very simple. Let's start with the first one. So would you follow me, follow me? Second one. So would you follow me, follow me? And the third. So would you follow me, follow me? Just create some spacing, kind of. If you have like two things that are very similar, but then not again, it, it, it creates separation. The main vocal effect wise, again, not a whole lot. Channel EQ. Cutting away the lows, boosting the mid, upper mids and the very top end. Compressor to level out the vocal, but it was already very good balance. You can see it by the waveform. And then we got channel 17, the stereo delay, just a hint. So would you follow me, follow me? Just to fill out these gaps in between. And then of course reverb, let's play it without anything on there. So would you follow me, follow me To go and fight the war, don't you see? You should just follow me, follow me Quite spacious, since it's a very minimal song, especially this part right here. There's not a lot in the instrumental going on. Very, everything is muted and like the cutoff close to give room to the vocal. And then just to fill everything out again. Some reverb, some delay. And that's basically it. That's the entire song. Save the day. If you want to know anything else, how it was made or done, let me know in the comments. The mastering was done externally. I personally just had a limiter on the entire time to just check what it would sound like loud. There is just like a Pro L on there. And that's basically it. And yeah, go check it out. The full song, full length. There is like a DJ version, instrumental version, the normal radio version everything down below in the description go check it out support it if you like it share it with your friends put it in your playlist i would highly appreciate that and tomorrow back again here in the studio more music making